Well, hi kids. This is a picture of a Volkswagen Beetle made out of Legos. Isn't that cool? I have a Volkswagen Beetle, but it doesn't look as cool as this one. Hey, anyway, guys, welcome to the Jump Ministry message of the day for Thursday, August 6th, 2020. Goodness gracious, have we had a lot of rain. I might put a picture up of some of the rain, or you can just look on Facebook because everybody's putting them out there right now. But the little church that I got married in almost got flooded, but the Lord kept the waters away from it, so I'm praising Him for that. All right, we're going to be talking today about how Jesus guards his sheep. That's going to be in the Gospel of John chapter 10. And we're going to be talking about creativity. So get your Bibles and open them up to John chapter 10. Here we go. Well, hi, kids. Today's been wild. It's been raining. Now the sun's out and they say more rain's coming. So I hope you're doing okay. Today's Thursday. We skipped yesterday because I had a long, long day at work yesterday. And I came home. I was very tired and I went to bed. So we're going to pick up today talking about the Good Shepherd. We studied verses 1 through 6 in the Bible. And that's where we learn that Jesus gathers his sheep together. And he knows us by name. Isn't that cool? Today we're going to learn something else. He changes how he's describing himself a little bit. He goes from talking about gathering his sheep. He talks about guarding his sheep. Listen to these verses. I'm going to pick up in verse uh, 7 of the Gospel of John, chapter 10. And I'll, I'll, matter of fact, let me go back to 6, because 6 begins this sentence. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Did you see how he said, I am the gate? What's this mean? Jesus is talking about a gate. A gate is something that protects something that keeps other things out. Remember in the beginning, we talked about how some people were trying, or some animals or something were trying to climb over the walls and get to the sheep. And Jesus is, uh-uh, no way. Uh-uh. And now remember what happened right before this story. A man had been kicked out of church for talking about Jesus. And he had been born blind and Jesus healed him. And the man slowly realizes who Jesus is and they kick him out of church. And here, Jesus is calling the church leaders, robbers and thieves and stuff. And what does this mean, kids? This story has so much to teach us, even today. Jesus is warning that sometimes bad people will come into church and try to get us distracted and try to confuse us about who Jesus is. And Jesus is teaching us that he protects his sheep from those kinds of people. He's saying people that come in and they are trying to confuse you and stir things up and, and make everybody mad. He says, they're thieves and robbers. And don't listen to them. He's saying, I'm the gate. And in order to be safe, you come through me and you'll be safe. Don't go through those other people who are telling you stories and nonsense. Now, you have to think of something, kids. All these people who were listening to Jesus' story that day, they had respected their church leaders since they were little kids. And they looked up to them and they thought that their church leaders were protecting them. And Jesus is saying, no, they weren't protecting you. They were actually hurting you. And this story still takes place today. You need to be very, very careful, kids, who you listen to. Of course, you listen to your mom and dad. You listen to your Sunday school teachers you listen to your pastors. That's why I'm here in the church and Pastor Fred's here in the church. Our job is to protect you and protect you from evil and point you towards Jesus. That's our whole job. And to spread the hope of Jesus to everybody we come in contact with. And now let me talk to you about some people in church. Some people in church, like the sheep, they come into the sheepfold and they're content. They just want to stay in there and that's all they want to do. But I don't think that's what Jesus meant for us. I think Jesus meant for us to come into the sheepfold, be protected for certain times, and then come back out through him and go into the world and tell everybody about Jesus. 
And then when we need to, we come back in through Jesus and we gather together again where we find rest and nourishment. But I don't think we're supposed to just stay in there. And I don't think we're supposed to be out in the field all day dancing around and doing silly things like a sheep. I think we're supposed to balance our lives between being out in the field, that's the world, and teaching people and loving people and coming back together to gather together and refresh ourselves. And Pastor Fred used an analogy or a, a, a story like that recently. And it really got me thinking about the sheepfold and realizing that we have to come through Jesus when we come in and when we go out. We can't climb over the walls and look for other ways. No, we come through Jesus because he's right there at the gate. He lets us in. He lets us out. All right. Think about that. I know that some kids right now aren't really understanding me. And this might be a little bit too hard for them to understand. But all I want to do is get you realizing how much Jesus loves you. And he knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows that you all have a lot more energy and you move a lot quicker than I do. And he knows that I'm slowing down now because I'm old. And he still loves us both. And he still wants us all to be together. Okay, what I want to do tomorrow, I've talked about how Jesus gathers his sheep and how Jesus guards his sheep. Tomorrow I want to talk about how Jesus gives his life for his sheep. And then I want to start something called the Christian Workers Resource Guide. And if you, mom and dad, if you're watching, this is excellent material on how to become a Christian. And then once you become a Christian, how to grow as a Christian. That's going to start probably... I'll, introduce it tomorrow, Friday. I'll develop it more Sunday in the Jump Ministry Worship Service. And then all next week, we're going to be studying how to be a Christian. Because some kids might not even know. They know they go to church and they have jump and they have music and everything. And it's fun. But have we ever taught them how to truly be a Christian? And what does it mean? And then once we are following Jesus, how do we grow? And I think it's high time we do that. Now, I've always hinted about it, but I think we're going to have a focused study on that. So, Mom and Dad, this study might be good for you, too, because it might be going over some material that you can use in your family around the dinner table. Because there is a section in here about journaling and writing down answers to questions. I think this would be a very healthy thing to do. I've prayed about it, and the Lord's leading me that direction. So, that is how we're going to go. Okay, we're going to be back with our Purpose Driven Life devotional for kids, talking about creativity. And I found this very interesting. So let me get Corey, and we'll be right back. Did I say welcome to the Jump Ministry message of the day? Don't think I did. Oh, well. Welcome. Well, this one, Corey's called Spark Your Creativity. Hey, kids, we're in day 22 of our Purpose Driven Life devotion for kids. And it starts right with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. You want to read that, Corey? Uh-huh. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God has big ideas. So big, in fact, that his creativity started the whole world. He created thousands of animals, ginormous and tiny. Mm -hmm. Fast like the cheetah and slow like the two-toed sloth. Oh, my. He designed large or tall lodgepole pine trees and massive redwoods too big to climb. His hands carved mountains and rivers and poured the whitewater rapids. Every time you eat tasty pancakes or a juicy burger, you're feasting on God's creativity. You know what? I think I want to feast on some creativity. I want to go to Five Guys. They make the best burgers. In the well, that's just my opinion. All right, look here. When God got around to creating people, he decided to make them with many of his own characteristics. That means he designed you to be creative. Mm-hmm. When you think of how to build a fort in the woods or draw a picture of another planet or dream up a new version of your favorite game, that's because of God's creativity in you. Isn't that amazing? So build, draw, write, design. See how creative you can be with your hands, your body, your stories, and more. God's creativity has no limits. What ideas has he put into your head? And I say, God, thank you for letting us shine some of your characteristics like creativity. You know something I like to do? And Corey, I think we'll do this together. I like building Legos. And that just helps me. It helps me focus. And I love when they're done, I can roll them around. I, had, I tend to make a lot of cars. I like the cars. 
And recently I found a Volkswagen Beetle made out of Legos. And so I've been asking for uh, that, or maybe I'll ask for that, I meant to say, for Christmas or my birthday or something. But that's still like um, a long time away. So maybe I'll sneak out to Walmart and see if I can find it on the shelf up there. And, you know, maybe, maybe. But you know what? I heard my little girl Katie's up in Baltimore, and she's been playing with Legos too. So she sure is my daughter because she likes doing it, and she's very creative. So, guys, with that, I'm going to get back to work. I got things I got to do, and it looks like it's getting ready to rain again. Here comes the storm. Look up there. Look how dark it is, Corey. Here it comes again. So you all be careful. I love you, and I'll see you soon. Let's take off our hats and pray, and we're going to thank God for creativity. Because I know some of you are very creative. I've seen things you've made. Maybe you'd like to sh send me a video or a picture or something of something you're creating. You know, that's a nice thing to do. And I'm not saying spend a bunch of money. You can be creative with all kinds of things. My cat, no, I said my cat, the cat in the house likes to create her own tents. She pulls rugs up into a tent and then she climbs in there and goes to sleep. I think that's pretty creative. All right, and I step on her sometimes because I'm in a hurry and I just see the rug there and I step and I hear meow and then she comes out and yells at me. So anyway, I don't know why I told you that, but it was just a funny story I was thinking of. Let's pray. And Lord, thank you for creativity. Thank you for caring so much for us. As we learned earlier, you guard us. You know, after gathering us together, you guard us. Help us remember that. How you watch over us all the time. We never need to be afraid of telling somebody about you because you're with us and you'll help us. Thank you for allowing us to build and draw and sing and do all different kinds of things, Lord. So on this beautiful day you've blessed us with, help us pause a moment and say thank you. Because you want us to create things and, and point people to Jesus. And we can do that through pictures and just all kinds of fun things. So please watch over us, Lord, and keep us safe. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. See you later, guys. Put my cowboy hat back on. Maybe jump on my tractor. i got to move it anyway. It's sitting in a puddle. Okay, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Well, thank you for spending time with us today. This has been the Jump Ministry Daily Devotional Message. If your children have any questions... They can email Pastor Bill at jumpministry at mac.com and my phone number is in the membership directory. This has been Jump Ministry from the Church at St. Charles. Have a great day.